What up? What up? For those of you guys, first time to a Cusco Uncut, two times a week, I curate vlogs and edit the crap out of them, make them real nice. And then once a week, we do a Cusco Uncut where we don't edit at all. And today, I'm doing a little bit different because I'm just going to have to stop the video completely. What's going on over there? No. <laughs> okay. I thought my air conditioner was going to come on and ruin all the audio. Today, I'm doing something much different. I'm not just going to sit in front of the camera and talk. I've got a clutch of snakes that hatched out, the first clutch of the season. And we've got one that didn't make it. I'm going to kind of show you why I think it didn't. And then also, I'm going to feed it to our African bullfrog. Ready? <laughs> First, before we get into the snakes, I just wanted to cover the topic of me blocking people on this channel. I didn't ever want to do it before, and I really don't like to do it. I don't think that it's the thing that I should do. I don't like to take away from the, all the positive folks out there that are always commenting, leaving such great supportive comments out there. I like to go and engage on there in the comment section. But every now and then, man, there's one thing in there that just, like, catches me real quick, and I'm just like, ooh. And if it, like, kind of hits me in that little deep spot, I'm just like, you mother... And... If you can prove to me in two and a half seconds that you are a classless asshole, I will prove to you that in three seconds I can block your classless ass. So, I like to try and keep it cool down there, you know what I mean? Sometimes I take things personally. I'm only human. But, for all you guys that are full of class and are just awesome individuals, I thank you for being part of this channel. Because you've been very much to me and you make it a much better place. Let's get on with the snakes here. So, they haven't shed yet at all i'm just going to do a kind of quick look and to tell you the pairing was a coral glow pied 100 percent het clown to an enchi firefly clown so we've got worst case odds were to get um normals that were double het clown pied and we got actually very good odds other than the one snake that didn't make it of course let me just start showing you snakes we got a coral glow What I'm thinking is an Enchi Coral Glow, maybe even a Enchi Fire Coral Glow. <laughs> I'm going to wait till they shed to make a, a final diagnosis, but here you go right here. This is the first snake, and this is the only male. The rest of them were females. Check out that whacked out pattern, especially down towards the back end of the snake. So this guy, again, this is a double het clown pied, uh, what I believe is an Enchi Coral Glow male. And I'll have to double check once he sheds out and kind of reassess and Make sure I've got an actual proper proper diagnosis of the genetics going on in that snake right there. Next snake is going to be, uh, let's, let's do the non-clown visual animals first. And there's only one more of those. So we hit some pretty sweet odds on getting, uh, we would have had four visual clowns, which, you know, we had, by odds, it would have been 50% chance we should have had three by, if, you know, odds were perfect, which they're not. Um. And But one of the visual clowns was one of the ones that did not survive. It basically cut the egg open and then died. And I've had a snake do that once before. Last season, we had a snake cut out of the egg, crawl halfway out, and, and die. It's kind of crazy how that happens. And unfortunate, but it definitely does. And this one is a nice-looking firefly. Maybe Enchi Firefly. I'm so bad sometimes at identifying snakes, but it'll, it'll give it some time. And you can see that tracking on the bottom um sorry for the shaky hands i may or may not have been uh attending what may or may not have been a unofficial carpet fest that may or may not have happened and i know i'm calling this a cusco uncut but i may or may have not been playing with a uh, bala song for the first time in many years and i cut the crap out of my hands a little bit while doing so so that's just kind of is what it is, and I'm just living with life as as I'm living it. <laughs> there may or may have not been a lot of whiskey involved in the last 36 hours, but I did just go for a run. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. So I showed you the two non-clowns. Let's move on to the three visual clowns, and the first one here... <sighs> At first, I was thinking there was some kind of enchi action going on with this snake, and now I'm not. Come on, focus, camera. We're not editing this thing. You got to focus for me. Thank you. Um, I was thinking, like, when I first saw the head, I was thinking maybe an enchi clown, but then when I see the whole body, I'm thinking, no, that's not enchi clown. Come on, head stamp. Man, you're making me look real bad, camera. There we go. Uh, it's, I mean, it's definitely visual clown. It might just be a really cool 
looking a normal clown with no incomplete dominant traits. Man camera, I'm just gonna I'm going to manual focus because you are just driving me up the wall. And of course you got those pied tracks on the bottom. And beautiful looking snake. But we'll be we'll be doing a full video on these guys once they shed out completely with a full vlog with no one knows which is a segment that will be part of this channel for the eternity no matter what some idiot might say about it <laughs> yes shut up um where is uh the next snake and the next snake here i believe is a fire clown the the het pied really does some funky stuff to the the clowns I found, so it makes the I identification process a little bit funky. But I'm fairly certain this is a fire clown, especially with that that kind of fire clown looking head stamp, and another uh, beautiful visual clown, 100% head pied, and uh, most likely fire. And some of these will be available after we get our uh, Patreon folks deciding with if they want any of them or not so appreciate you guys too man been a lot of fun with this discord thing and i need to pull out another snake for you guys we're rolling i'm starting to have dead air time that's not good i'm not cutting it <sighs> maybe i should have practiced talking for a little bit before we did the video <laughs> no let's just go with it and the next animal here is a fire clown Firefly clown, that is. So that's pretty sweet. Firefly clown is a pastel fire clown. And, of course, 100% het pied. And all these snakes I've been showing you, with the exception of that coral glow, these have all been uh, females. So super stoked on those eyes. Look at how busy the side alien heads are. They're all running together and being super busy. Firefly clown-like and that nice little super faded and blushed out dorsal stripe man man that is a good looking snake right there i haven't decided yet which ones of these i'm keeping and which ones i'm not but i'm i'm like tempted to keep all the females but i feel like that wouldn't be very fair for some of you guys but i'm not worried about fair anymore you know what i'm really i'm getting older and i'm realizing that my life is is not as long as it was at one point i don't have time for stuff anymore i don't know how that ties into what i'm talking about but it, it's what i felt like saying now, now here we go. That was all of the healthy snakes that hatched out nicely that are doing fantastic. And here comes the one that is maybe a little disgusting for some folks because it's not alive. Not alive. Unfortunately, this is going to be another firefly clown. And it's just so crazy to me that it hatched out. You know, it literally cut itself out of the egg and then just didn't make it from there. And you can see that the yolk was not completely absorbed at all. And it looks to me like um, some of it got wrapped around itself and it maybe cut off the supply of nutrients, which makes sense in, when you look at the fact that the bottom of the jaw, the bottom jaw did not completely form, which also speaks to the fact that, you know, there wasn't enough nutrients getting to the animal itself so it could properly develop. But it's just crazy to me that it still made it far long enough to cut itself at least out of the egg. It made one little slit in the egg and then, you know, when it, all the other snakes were out and this one was still sitting there with one slit in it, it, uh, it's just, it's a bummer. It's a real bummer, man. It's kind of sad. Well, I mean, it's super sad, but I'm, I don't want to say I'm getting numb to it because I'm not like getting numb to it per se, but actually, you know what? I am getting a little bit numb to it some, some bit because like this is, it happens when you're, when you're breeding animals, especially with lots of eggs like that, it's bound to happen that some of them are not going to survive. And that's very unfortunate, but it's part of life. And, uh, man, but we're going to continue the cycle and, feed this little guy to the uh to jerry jerry back there are pixie frog african bullfrog i was going to try and feed to the indigo snake but the snake that we had that was stillborn last season the indigos didn't seem interested in it and then i was gonna maybe scent it with mouse or a rat because that's what the indigos have been eating and then I thought, maybe it's beneficial for these indigos to not be interested in eating snakes, especially if I'm planning to pair them down the line at some point. I don't want them to be super keen on eating other snakes when I put them together, because some of the female is pretty wily, and I just don't want them to eat each other when I start introducing them. So I decided instead that my bullfrog is probably going to love this snake, and it will not go to waste. 
It'll be the first snake that the bullfrog eats, though. So let's uh here, let's let's move on over there, see if we can make this happen. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the exposure up because it's kind of dark over there in that bullfrog spot. I'll switch the audio to the mic on top of the camera instead of my magical SM7B I've been using for you guys. Actually, here, get ready for some noise. So I'm gonna turn this sucker around. Oh, here we go. I like this style of uncut, man. It's kind of, it's different. I'm not just sitting there, we're doing things. We're, we're going places. All right, Jerry, you ready to give this thing a chomping? You're about that right size, but this is gonna be the perfect size meal for you, I think, so. Here we go. Jerry's like, no, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. It's okay, Jerry, don't be scared. Oh, come on, camera. Do me a solid and focus. I've only got no hands available. To... Oh my gosh, this pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. There we go. Come on, Jerry. You know you want it. It's good. It's tasty. It's like chicken. Nom, nom, nom. Oh! Oh, there he goes. I knew it, dude. Jerry is a hungry, hungry hippo. You gonna finish it, Jerry? He's like, yeah, if you leave me alone. Come on, Jerry. Chomp. Chomp, Jerry. It's a meal for you. It's good protein. Don't let that snake go to waste, Jerry. Jerry, I'm rooting for you. Get that thing in there. Come on, it's food. You were right. You were right to bite it. You were right to put it in your mouth. Don't fail me now, Jerry. All right, I'm not gonna cut it, but I am going to speed it up for you guys because Jerry's taking his sweet time. Oh my God, dude, <laughs> that literally took about 25 minutes. I cannot even feel my hands anymore. That was ridiculous. And it was also very impressive and also very cool that both of those animals originate in Africa and that they're completing each other's life cycles. Sad the snake was gone, but I love watching animals eat and I've never seen a frog eat a snake before. That was amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed it more than my hands enjoyed holding that camera there. I tried to hold it as steady as I could for you guys. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>